What is up, everybody? You are checking out the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast. I'm laughing at Ant because I'm looking at Ant and the camera. And he's just saying they're mean mugging. He's like Diesel, Big Daddy Cool in the background. While I'm, um, Psycho, Psycho said, so yeah, I'll take it. Um, actually, I'm the Hakamadi Ant C. Uh, you and uh, introduce yourself, sir. I'm Christian. My camera's a little bit fucked up. I'm working on it. But, like, uh, uh, you ever see the show? Are you scared of the dark? Are you afraid of the yeah, dark? Yeah, I'm, I'm not there scared of the dark, though. It's the, the show is called, so it's basically like it's an old 90s show, and it kind of the lighting it. looks like that. Uh, so that's Christian. This is Ian, and uh, we're the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> I can't help it now. I'm gonna keep looking at him in the camera. Um, and we're covering WWE Monday Night Raw from January 8th, 2024, live in Portland, Oregon. And uh, we see Cody Rhodes arriving backstage. Uh-oh, Cody Rhodes. Yeah, uh-oh. Cody That's Rhodes. what Ant's nephew says. He goes, uh-oh, Cody Rhodes is coming. No, he goes, oh boy, Cody Rhodes. Oh boy, Cody Rhodes. Yeah. So he's very into Cody Rhodes. And it's his birthday, so happy birthday, baby happy Chris. Happy birthday, baby Chris. Oh, Cody uh, Rhodes. He's a big he. I don't know if he's a big Cody Rhodes fan. He, he was just Seth. like he was. Yeah, he's a big Seth fan, but he was taken aback, I guess, by Cody Rhodes. But he threw me. There was a fight going on, and Cody Rhodes was coming, and he goes, "Oh boy, Cody Rhodes!" Yeah, like it was gonna get so serious. Yeah, he's funny. Uh, and it's, it's birthday today. He's five. Uh, so Drew McIntyre is in the rain to start Raw, and he says, "Last week I needed that title, but as you can see, I didn't." I don't have it. Maybe Seth and Sammy are right. Maybe I'm holding myself back. I need to get my head screwed on right and step away from WWE for a while. He goes on, it occurred to me, I didn't lose straight up. Damian Priest cashed in and cost me the match. Why didn't you wait till the match was over? You screwed us both, you idiot. Drew says, maybe I should leave four years. For for nine years, and the gal Gary Hero's reception when I return. That's when CM Punk oh. comes out, and CM Punk says, "We are in Piper Country." I heard my name and figured I'd let you say everything to my face. And Drew says, "Congratulations! It's been a month, and you're still here. I don't care what you said outside the company. I care about what you do to me personally. I travel with you for years. I know a lot about you." When you were champion, you called yourself a locker room leader. I have personal I- issues, and I could have dealt with a real leader, but you saw me as a threat. You're straight edge, but actually you're a demon. After nine years, I'm your leader now, kid. So then CM Punk says, I called myself a lot of things. If I'm not a leader, who did you watch leave? Who did I watch come back and lead? I'm not a demon. When, when pushed, I'm worse than Satan himself. I'm a real nice guy until it's time not to be. Drew says, when the going gets tough, CM Punk leaves. I will I will exercise I will exercise you in the Royal Rumble and win this time for me. CM Punk says, I'm going to lead by example and walk away before I punch your teeth down your throat. No one can stop me from the Royal Rumble and the Royal Rumble. I'm going to throw you out last. And that's the end of that pretty long promo between the two. Um, who do you think got the best and the, who won this promo, do you think? Um, I'm going to go with – I think Drew – this was a good by both of these guys. I didn't expect these two to come face-to-face so quick just because, you know, the story isn't with them two. It's with Rollins, with Punk, but – this is good that we're seeing. We saw this. These two are really good on the mic, and there are the. It is like a real life personal thing. Um, and aren't they? I, I I I would give it to CM Punk. Um, he didn't say too much. He doesn't have to say too much, and the crowd's gonna be with him by his side like crazy. Um, this was this was great. We need to see a match between these two in the future. It just it kind of sucks because it, it it's not gonna go anywhere. Because we, we, we know after the War Rumble, these two will interact with each other for a while. So I agree. Like, I thought it was a good promo, but he pretty much said 
like everything like he keeps regurgitating the same stuff. Like at some point sorry, I'm eating a Skittle. At some point we have to get over the fact that CM Punk left for nine years. Like I'm over it. He's back. Let's focus on what's gonna happen. But I wouldn't mind seeing the two of them fight in a singles match, but I wouldn't I either. Get that. Uh, speaking of singles matches, though, we have the first match of the night. Tag Team Champion Finn Balor with the other half of the Tag Team Champion Damian Priest. Taking on Tommaso Ciampa with Johnny Gargano. Uh, this was a good match. Uh, I said on Twitter that it was going to be a fire match, but it really wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, I thought they were going to have more time, but it was kind of basic. Uh, the end comes after Finn Balor goes to suplex Tommaso Ciampa into the ring. But Gargano grabs Balor's leg, and Ciampa gets the sort of uh, cheap win there. But to say, you know, they get the, the Devils get their due. They always cheat to win. So, do you think with Ciampa getting the win between a tag ma- match between DIY and Judgment Day, who would win? Judgment Day, fuck DIY. Uh, guys, on Monday, oh. DIY versus JD McConaughey and Dominic Mysterio. DIY. Okay. They, none of those two dudes have been relevant, in my opinion, since they were both over at NXT. And in- like, Gar- Johnny Gar. One second. Hello? And Jinder Mahal versus Seth Rollins. Jinder Mahal and Seth Rollins. Yeah, that's a good. This is the answer. And- I didn't know I locked him. My bad. Taking an intermission. I got to unlock the door real quick. I'm fucked. I'm corking. We also have the real. Uh, the Miz and our truth okay. versus Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Okay. So the whole Judgment Day, uh, Finn Balor and Damian Priest are fighting Miz and our truth, and DIY is fighting JD and Dominic. What about Drew? Is he fighting? Drew doesn't say. What did you think about that? Now, are you a fan of DIY? They're okay. I don't know. They don't thrill me. No, they're right. they don't. I like uh, Johnny Gargano. So you like Judgment Day better than them? Probably. Uh huh. And you think they're gonna win? Uh yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Judgment Day is. Is it for the title? Oh, I'm, I'm sure it will be if they. Oh, the Miss and Our Truth one. Yeah. No, not the Miss and Our Truth. I'm talking about down the line. I think they're they're. Planning to do DIY versus um, the Judgment Day. I was just trying to figure out in that match who you think would win, and you oh the Judgment Day, yeah, Judgment and Day. they kind of are doing that on Monday, yeah, but not like I'm talking about like Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus. Okay. You know. See, maybe that'll maybe the next week. All right, start. I'm back. All right, yeah, no, we were just. So DIY is fighting JD McDonough and Dominic Mysterio. Oh Lord. And then uh, Dominic, yeah, go ahead. And then our truth and the Miz are fighting um Judgment Day, the tag champion. Pause and truth was gonna be your new undisputed tag team champions. Are the titles on the line? Yeah. Um, Why wouldn't they be? I could kind of see it happening too. Especially where they just like messed with uh the Miz so bad. Oh dude. And everybody I, loves our truth, so I I think they might get the title on Monday. Right, right, I do too. So we get Becky Lynch backstage, and she just basically says that Nia and I didn't end each other, and this is just getting started, which kind of new. Uh, our next match we have Ludwig Kaiser versus Kofi Kingston, and uh, both Gunther men- comes back Monday too. Yep, Gunther's back this Monday. Uh, both men get counted out during this match. After, though, Kofi dives onto Kaiser, onto the announce table. Uh, but Kaiser pokes Kofi's eye, and then Kofi backstrops Kaiser onto the announce table. Kaiser tosses a chair at Kofi, and then Kaiser punches Kofi and nails, like, a kangaroo kick-type move. Um, what do you think about this uh, sort of nastiness that Kaiser is bringing to Kofi Kingston this week? What's this for? I, I'm not interested. It's for nothing. It, these are the type of sh- this is the type of shit that you do to fill in your fucking quarter hours. 
that you don't know what to do with. Yeah. You don't want to put all your stars in, in the beginning. You don't want to put all your stars in the middle. So you have to fill it with bullshit. This is the same. This is what they like. I'm not interested in this. I like Kofi Kingston, but at this point in his career, without the New Day, what is he? Nothing. This was boring. I'm it's tired like of seeing Luka Kaiser, Kaiser come out. I'm tired of seeing Luka Kaiser come out every week and just be a bullshit heel that fucking bosses that other dude around and then gets bitched by Gunther. Like that shit's annoying. Leave Imperium, split those three guys, let those guys do their own thing. Because Luca Kaiser, I have nothing against him in the ring. I think he's pretty decent. But he comes off as like like a real douchebag. And let him use that without getting bitched by gun. I don't know. I'm just not interested in any of these, any of these guys. Yeah. They do. They've been doing this bullshit for the last two weeks. Yeah. I they agree. did a tag team match with Jey Uso and Kofi. That was okay. But yeah. even that wasn't really shit. Yeah, well, I mean, he got hurt, and yeah, yeah, it got stopped. Um, all right. Well, speaking of stopping stuff, Nia Jax comes out. Nia says, "Why was it so shocking that I beat Becky Lynch? What would be shocking is if I broke your face, Michael Cole. I'm more focused on Rhea Ripley, or I'm sorry, I'm more focused on the Royal Rumble, and that's when the World Women's Champion Rhea Ripley comes out. Rhea says, "These people know you like to talk a big game. You're acting like you already won the Rumble." You remember last year, I threw you out. Fact is, Becky isn't in the Royal Rumble until you, until you want to stop me. I have, or I'm sorry, the fact is, Becky isn't Rhea Ripley. She's not me. And until you want to stop me, I advise you to stop walking around like you run the division. If you win, it's best to keep my name out of your mouth. Nice as I give you all the credit, I put you on your ass when I came back. The only reason I don't have this title is because you're scared. When I win at the Royal Rumble, I'm going to choose you. See you soon, unstoppable champion in the Nia Lees. Um, I feel like this is unnecessary because they could have just done Nia versus Rhea to, like, begin with. You know, like, it's good that this is a promo, but they should. I don't understand why they're. Also, like, why don't they just have Nia fight Rhea at the Rumble? Like, you know. Yeah, they I did that shit where fucking. Um. Where they just filled in, like, uh, they did that five-way. Like, they did, uh, who's the girl that rolls around with the Creed Brothers? I forget her name. Uh, I mean, I, but she was really good, though, I thought. She was good, yes, but who the fuck, like. Yeah. A lot of, it makes more sense to do Nia Jax because I still, and I think a lot of people still look at her as like, okay, who is she? Like, no one really knows her. She's new. She's not that good. People know Nia Jax. I just don't like, it's basically heel versus heel. That's the only thing that's, uh, that's the only, uh, you know, criticism I can give it because it hasn't started yet. And I think it has potential to be good because I've been a fan of Nia since, you know, she's come back. But if this needs to if you want this to play out, you're gonna have to turn one of them baby face. Right now, Rhea's gets more Rhea Ripley gets more fucking pops than she gets booze. Mm -hmm. Uh no one really likes Naya. So you don't want to put the judgment day baby face right now, especially right now, because they're doing the whole thing with R Truth. That makes them look more fucking heel. But it, it, that's the weird thing. We haven't seen Rhea and Dom come out together in a couple of weeks. What's up with that? So, I don't know. I think Rhea's slowly starting to fade away from the Judgment Day. And I think, um, oh, what was this? Oh, Rhea, for the first time, when she comes out, she always said, like, she always screams, I don't, I don't need you to cheer me or whatever. And for the first time this week, she was like, yeah, and like bringing it, bringing on the crowd. I, I, I never booed her. Dude, I never booed her. I had the video. We had, we had an interaction, and it was great. Um, so, yeah, so next we have another match that Ant doesn't give a fuck about and that uh, I don't care about anything that I'm sure Chris doesn't care about either. Uh, oh. This way. Oh, I'm sure. Hang on. There we go. Okay. Sorry. Um, 
the tag, the women's tag team championship, the tag team champions, Caden Carter and Katana Chance taking on Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. But before yeah. Chelsea, but before the match can happen, we see Shinsuke Nakamura attacking Cody Rhodes backstage, which oh, of course Cody Rhodes is going to be hurt. But getting to the match, uh, uh, Piper Niven hits a Uranagi to Caden Carter. Katana Chance moves Caden out of the way. And in doing that, Piper accidentally hits a Vader bomb to Chelsea Green. And then Carter and Chance nail a keg stand. And they retain the women's tag team titles. Did you really care at all about this? No. Absolutely not. Yeah. You already know I don't give a fuck. I don't like women's wrestling. Why the hell would I care about this? All right. Listen, I totally agree, man. I think it's... It's really stupid. It doesn't make sense. And uh, I'm not really a big fan of uh, this women's division. There's no tag division on Raw or SmackDown. So it's just very strange. Yeah. We get a funny promo from our truth showing when he was little. He shows all like the Judgment Day as babies. And he just talks about dreaming to be in the Judgment Day. He says, like the Judgment Day says, live, laugh, and love. Which... We all know the Judgment Day doesn't say that, but uh, we see JD McDonald's upset backstage. Damien says, When the time comes, I'll deal with our truth. Why are we not handling Drew McIntyre? Rhea says, We don't need him as an enemy. And Pre says, He's not. He's a Jew. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know that. Uh, next, we have our next match JD McDonald with Dominic Mysterio versus The Miz. Uh, our truth comes out to be in JD's corner, but he sort of is like in The Miz's corner. Um, during the match, Miz nails a baseball slide, and he ends up baseball sliding JD into Dominic, and nails a skull crushing finale. And the Miz gets the wind here after our truth raises the Miz's hand, and it looks like our truth is still a part of the Judgment Day, but not friendly with Dominic and JD. So, what are your thoughts on this good reunion between uh, Awesome Truth, the Miz, and our truth? This is great. I felt like I was 13 again. I actually got to see them both live. I actually saw when Miz portrayed them. That happened at the Hershey's Giant Center. I went. Uh, but this was good, man. Um, our truth I guys, I'm not going to say this again too long because I've, I say this every time about our truth every time we talk about him. I love him. He's great. Happy. He's doing his thing. He looks doesn't look a single day past 20. Uh, I love him. Um, this specifically – was it was good? I mean, the Miz is you know starting to be more of a baby face. Uh, it, it works good because Judgment Day is heel, and you have a lot of especially with Priest, and you know you have the one dude like kind of like Sammy was with the Bloodline. Uh, it's doing it, it. It's working. I see why JD doesn't like our truth because our truth fucking beat him in that street fight like two weeks ago or whatever. So. Yeah, Dominic is what the fuck is he? He he's been on a kind of a slow a slow run since he's lost that North American title to Dragon Lee. Uh, but overall, this was okay. But I just I want to see if Austin Truth can win those tag team titles, and I think they can, and I think they will. So be cool. It would be a good sort of flashback. I mean, listen, if Lita and Becky could win the titles in 2023, awesome truth to win. <laughs> no, right? If and, uh, and shit, yeah. yeah. Well, the world champion Seth Frickin' Rollins comes out. Seth says, after the Royal Rumble, we are on the road to WrestleMania. My WrestleMania track record is pretty good, but I have never taken a world title into WrestleMania. I've never been the high, high headline, and that changes this year. This is the year of Seth Rollins. I worked too hard and long and turned the title that didn't exist before into the most important title in this industry. The work is not done. Who am I going to be at WrestleMania? That roster is loaded. That's when Jinder Mahal comes out. Jinder says, of course you're singing your own praises. Why is it that last week I was more of a revolutionary than you will ever be? You instill no change, speak no truth, and bring no value. Um, he says, you have the audacity to overlook the modern-day Maharaja. I beat Randy Orton with ease, yet you overlook me. I see through this facade. For the first time, I have your attention. And Seth says, you're right. We have been overlooking you on purpose. We've been trying to forget you. 
I admire that that after the rock pride knew you got up. I don't respect you getting in my face. You're sick of being overlooked. Take a swing, gender. That's what I thought. Same old gender, because gender doesn't hit him. But then as Seth turns around, gender attacks Seth from behind. Seth nails a super kick, goes for a stop, but gender leaves. Uh, and we find out that next week on Raw, we'll see Seth Rollins defend the title against Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal was on the bump, and we he didn't sound too good Like when they were asking him questions. I really don't think, obviously, he didn't stand a chance before, but he just can't really think on his feet when it comes to talking. But what would you think of this promo between the two? The modern-day Maharaja continues go. to fucking deliver. I mean... There's people on Twitter saying, oh, my God, his world championship run was good. No, the fuck it wasn't. No, the fuck it wasn't. Jinder Mahal's championship run was god awful. The only thing good about his uh, fucking world title run was that entrance. But right now, I don't understand the hate of Jinder Mahal. This isn't horrible. I don't know why Tony Khan and all these people on Twitter are fucking coming at him. Because, one, we all know he's not going to win it. Yeah, WWE has a big market in India. They want to get an Indian star. They might do a show here this year. We uh, maybe we do too. Know. India is the second highest country that listens to us. So go ahead. Shout out to India. Okay, cool. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just you gotta build somebody like that up first off. Second, he's good. His promo against The Rock is what. It's probably what gave him the title shot. I mean, he's – he's there's a lot of foreign – and this is nothing against foreign guys, right? Because you know, you guys know how – like, yeah. But sometimes a lot of these foreign guys like to tend to not really uh, – people maybe not – might not understand what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But with this guy, gender, he can mix in Indian – and mix in really good English together, and people understand what he's saying, and he gets a reaction every time he comes out. He gets fucking booed. Sure and does. that's, that's, he's big. I'm not saying he's the best wrestler. And d let's do a, a history fact. Who did, uh, who was the first ever NXT champion? Seth Rollins. Who did Seth Rollins beat to become the first ever Seth or NXT champion? Jen Mahal. The story's right fucking there, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like they, I feel like he, sh they should have went there with that. Like us, they, should, they didn't mention that. I don't think, and that's why it's frustrating because like we know that, and like that, all they had to say was like, "Yeah, you tried to beat me years ago," and. That was for nothing, and I took you to the limit. And like you know, make us you know the story is there. Uh, I don't mind Jinder Mahal. Um, I just wouldn't have wanted to see this happen at at the Royal Rumble. So I'm glad it's happening at on. I think this is my prediction. Let's not forget, Jinder Mahal's in a faction. Had those Veer McMahon or whatever the fuck his name was, Veer Mahan. And Sanjay douchebag, and whatever that's the AEW fuck. The other guy have them interfere with the match some type of way, whatever, whatever. So maybe they, I, I think that's gonna happen to where they are gonna run it back at the War Rumble because at this point they're not gonna fight Drew McIntyre anymore. No, at this point Cody Rose is out of the picture. At this point. You don't want to build up another somebody else. I mean, you have this. The world title is, excuse me, the world championship is usually defended at the Rumble. And if Roman <laughs> is defending his universal title in a fatal four-way, Seth Rollins is going to have a match. Why not do it against Jinder Mahal? Listen, it could have been. I Just mean, for fuck's sake. We'll if you have to put him in a match, you are, you're already doing it. You're already doing it. Have a mini storyline. If they want to fucking throw Cody Rhodes with a bullshit, meaningless storyline with Shinsuke Nakamura that's going to go nowhere, why not do it with Jinder Mahal? At least the fucking title's on the line, and at least it makes sense. The whole Cody and Shinsuke Nakamura thing 
does not make any sense. Why? Oh, I'm not going to get into that because we're not talking about that. We'll get there. We'll get no there. Because it's coming up soon. Well, here's what doesn't make sense either. I mean, it was okay to have a match, but Ivar defeats Otis after a moonsault. Uh, kind of basic, not really anything important. We see um, Bronson Reed confronting Jay Uso backstage, and he tells Jay not to get in his way. Didn't really care so much about that. And you just pointed out we've made the main event. It's a street fight. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Cody Rhodes. During the match, Nakamura accidentally sprays mist in the timekeeper's eyes. That was a cool little shot to see. But um, Nakamura runs, and Cody Rhodes tosses Nakamura through a table. And then he nails a crossroads, and Cody Rhodes gets the victory and hopefully ends the storyline. What are your thoughts on that match? Um, what match? The Cody Rhodes and Shinsuke. Okay, Nakamura. that's what I, that's what I thought you said. Yeah. Allow me to speak my bullshit. Go ahead. It's I'm one of the, you know, when I, every time I start saying that, Ant, mm-hmm. just yeah. get some popcorn because I'm going off. Okay. Ever since they started doing this, first off, let, let, let me take it back. Shinsuke Nakamura starts doing all this bullshit in Japanese, all these bullshit Japanese vin- vignettes. Everyone thought it was CM Punk. At points, people thought it was Okada. There was a... For it to just be Cody Rose on a random episode of fucking Monday Night Raw makes no sense. I don't know why they're throwing Cody in this. I'm probably one of the biggest Cody Rhodes haters besides a couple other retards on Twitter. I'm not going to say names, but you know who you are. Um... I just don't understand why they would throw him in something like this when he's quote unquote supposed to finish a story. No. What? It's WrestleMania, guys. I don't care what anyone says. I will always stick to this because at the end of the day, I don't listen to any of you bullshit dirt sheet writers. writers. I don't listen to any of you bullshit Twitter annualists that are well known. I don't listen to any of you fucking space hosts that think anything. I believe that once January comes, you start building your WrestleMania matches. What I mean by that is, look what they're doing with CM Punk. Yes, he's getting into many segments with these other guys, but it's all going to be in the Royal Rumble. I'm, I'm getting off topic, but this is just an example because this is what they're doing right and this is what they're doing wrong. With Punk and all this shit, the story with Punk and Rollins, right? They're building it. They started building it up in January, early January, late December, like literally two weeks ago. And although we haven't seen them come face to face ever since, we know where it's going. They're doing the little stuff to fucking like, I don't know, like with like I'm talking about with Punk and Cody because they both have stories to finish. Why is CM Punk doing all this stuff? Talking about do, focusing more on the rumble, and Cody Rhodes is focusing on a bullshit storyline with Shinsuke. I, I I don't get it. I, that like I, I my point probably just went nowhere. But the like what I'm trying to say is like start building Roman and Cody or Rome or Cody and whoever. Maybe they are waiting for the War Rumble to do it. But why? Why you're not on SmackDown yet? Why hasn't Cody Rhodes gone to SmackDown yet? We're not even talking about that yet. He's still on Raw. If everyone supposedly thinks he's going against Roman, why haven't we seen him on the show that Roman's on? Or vice versa. That's what I don't understand about Cody Rhodes. That's why I don't like Cody Rhodes. Is it all his fault? No, because he's not the one booking the shows. But that's why I don't like Cody Rhodes' character. Because it doesn't make any sense he says he's going to do something and then reverses and then like the whole Brock Lesnar thing. Like, it, it, ugh, I'm, done. I'm done. They're probably going to have the Rock and Roman at Elimination Chamber. So that's probably why they haven't had um, Cody do anything with Roman yet because then that interferes with the Rock 
and Roman. I feel like right now, if that's what I doing, don't believe the rocks, I don't believe the rock and Roman's gonna happen. I thought it was no, gonna I'm happen. About if we don't see the oh, okay, listen, I, this is an early Royal Rumble prediction. If the rock does not come out during the Roman Reigns match after Roman wins the title and comes face to face, the match is not happening. You're not gonna build the fucking match three. What you're gonna build it at Elimination Chamber? The Rock ain't gonna show up at a fucking Australia and interfere with whatever Roman's reported. Yeah, no, I don't reported think reported by I... doofus ass Dave Meltzer, according to Warner Bro- or not Warner Brothers, the Wrestling Observer. He's not even fucking gonna be in Australia during the Chamber. So if he doesn't, sh- if The Rock don't show up at Royal Rumble. He's fighting Cody. It's Roman and Cody, especially if Cody wins the Rumble again. Man, you have just dropped a lot of stuff for us to think about. Uh, yeah, man. Well, what was your favorite part of Raw this week? Was that that was the main event, right? Uh, that was the main event. Definitely the fucking McIntyre and Punk face to face. Every time I get to see Phil on my fucking TV, now that he's in a WWE ring, ring I feel like these guys are. We're seeing a little bit different sides of Rollins and a lot of these guys since Punk's return. I'm not trying to say Punk's the – like, I'm not trying to dick ride Punk here. But ever since Punk's been back, a lot of these guys in their promos just – it feels real. Yeah. I've never taken Drew McIntyre so fucking serious until this promo. His stuff his with Seth, Seth was really good. Don't get me wrong. But this promo, I felt like that fucking like Holy hell. This oh, that's, actually, that's better. This promo with Seth with Punk, oh my god, I took him serious. I was actually I'm sitting on the edge of my chair like, like it's he I, he's good. It was this real was, to me, damn it. Damian Priest, when are you gonna cash in? Let me talk about this for like thirty seconds. Thirty seconds, Damian Priest. When are you going to cash in? When are you going to bring a championship back to the culture? Yeah. Some Let's people go. think Jinder is going to beat Seth on Monday, and then the, Damien's going to cash in on Jinder right then and there. If they, listen, if, they, if Damien Priest cashes in on Monday, I will. We're at the party. I just hope. I don't want. I, I kind of hope I cashes in at like WrestleMania. Or the Rumble, a big show. Um, no, like a a big thing, I yeah. want the cash in at Rumble. Maybe he'll cash in at Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber, and then that will cool. switch everything, and that will make even all of us. Bro, I don't. Know. Who's? Are you guys waking up at four thirty to watch? This I don't show? know. Yeah. It depends on my work. If we're I, gonna watch it at four thirty, yeah, we probably. It's on a Saturday. Oh yeah, well, then I will. I will. Well, listen, we are less than but a if minute. I, if I work. Okay, real quick. All Everyone right. support my Pittsburgh Steelers this Sunday. We're in the playoffs. Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's fucking go. We're in the playoffs. This is big for us. We're winning the Super Bowl. Dude, 100%. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This is a good episode of Friday Night Smackdown coming your way. Royal Rumble. A couple weeks away. Oh, Impact. Hard, TNA, hard to kill tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to – I'm buying tickets in two weeks to go to TNA in Philly. Let's go. Nice. I'm excited. I'm going to watch. I'm going to try to watch it tomorrow night. But until next time, stay safe and stay uncensored. Bye. Bye.